if you are as interested in religious propaganda as I am, I've got a huge treat for you today. Um, I actually used to collect this stuff. I um, There was a booth in my school, in the Centennial Student Union, and it wasn't a religious school, it was a public school. Uh, but they had a table with, you know, 20 different pamphlets, um, a whole rainbow of colors, and, you know, it would be a different topic for each pamphlet, and anywhere from abortion to, like, evolution to homosexuality and other just everything you can imagine and I picked one of each of these up and I held on to it and I started a little collection and it, it you know built it over over several years and then I lost the whole thing um, in my last move and I'm actually really upset because a lot of it was really really interesting um, but my sister recently uh, gave me uh, a new beginning to my uh, new collection of Christian propaganda and uh, she grabbed two issues of this magazine from my uncle's church and uh, none of their columnists right above a seventh grade level um, but the most interesting article that that either of these magazines has is, is this one it's called child abuse and guess what it's about? Um, so, here we go. It's by Linda D. Bartlett. Why don't we just admit it? Child abuse is legal in this country. We call it sex education. But in truth, it is child abuse. Modern sex education abuses children by stripping them of their innocence. It sexualizes our children. Comprehensive sex education incorporates sexuality into language, thinking skills, health, science, and lifestyle. Educators and parents, consciously or not, put their trust in a child abuser named Alfred Kinsey. He is called the father of modern sex education. Children, he said, are, quote, sexual from birth, unquote. Few people paid any attention to the fact that Kinsey used known pedophiles to experiment on children for the purpose of research. I didn't know that either. His twisted documentation made its way into textbooks. Homes, period. Churches, period. She does that a lot. You'll, you'll notice. Those who share Kinsey's disrespect for life and the presence of ch children stood ready to profit to further loosen moral restraints. Removing the, the innocence of childhood has created a flourishing market for retailers. Who knew? Huh? The advertising industry, pharmaceutical companies, healthcare, planned parenthood. Who other than this government subsidized monolith more unashamed buys for the role of sex educator pushes all manner of sexual paraphernalia, and then provides abortion services. For a fee, you understand. I haven't always used the term child abuse to describe sex, sex education. It was Douglas Gresham, the stepson of C.S. Lewis, uh, who helped me see it for what it is. I had written Gresham to invite him as a speaker for Lutherans for Life, I happened to mention personal efforts to help my church understand the dangers of sex education. You are right to do so, he said, because, quote, modern sex education is child abuse, unquote. Grisham knows what he's talking about. He ministers to women who've suffered sexual abuse and the loss of life through abortion that often follows years of abuse. I, too, have heard the painful stories of women who became promiscuous after being exposed to early instruction in sexuality or blatantly sinful abuse. For years, I traveled here and there speaking to boys, girls, and their parents. I did not explain the intimacies of sex, but rather the uniqueness of male and female. These, uh, this was received as a strange and novel idea. Maybe not surprising, considering that moms and dads have been under the influence of Kinsey, too. I kept asking, why would we want to teach our children about all these things pertaining to sex before first mentoring them to be boys? 
girls on the path to biblical manhood, womanhood. Churches have failed the youngest generations. That's what happens when we are deceived, fooled. The world stands before us hissing. Did God really say ellipses? We look around to see new trends, sophistication, contemporary teaching. Then we fall into doubt. We rationalize and we play the game. This is like so far one, two, three, four, five paragraphs. Um, anywho. Contemporary teaching, then we fall into doubt, we rationalize, we play the game. The world wins when we are distracted from our vocation of instructing children in purity instead of educate them in sex. So, along with others, I continue to encourage my church to please consider the source of modern sex education, to refuse to wrap Jesus around worldly opinions and trends. This mother and grandmother has a sensitivity in tune antenna. All right, lady, if you're so terrified of human sexuality, I'm just curious as to where your kids came from. That's so weird. Um, anyway, I sense, hear, and see that modern sex education is recruitment into sexuality. Therefore, it's child abuse. Duh. Modern sex education, I've got some bullets here, is not anatomy class, fails to guard the innocence of children, breaks down inhibitions by placing boys and girls together in the same classroom, instructs children to be comfortable with their bodies. And so they are, with girls having no clue why two cups and a thong might attract ungentlemanly attention. Tempts children to believe they are first and foremost sexual beings. When we believe that we are sexual beings, then it, uh, quotes are hers by the way, then it only follows that we have the right to be sexual. And in today's culture, no one should deny my rights. No one should deny my needs. Well, here's the truth that I will continue to proclaim. We are, first and foremost, human beings made in the image of God. And although fallen from that image, we are called to holy living as man or a woman. Equal but different. Can you imagine how that changes the way we see ourselves and others? The choices we make? The way we treat one another? The media and the general public is angry when a priest sexually abuses a child. We should be. But where is our righteous anger when children fall under the tutorage of Planned Parenthood? Sisus. Okay, I don't know what S-I-E-C-U-S -E is. Um. But it's an acronym for something. LGBT and Gleason approved textbooks, projects such as It Gets Better, and bullying programs initiated by homosexual advocate, homosexual advocate and leading sex advice columnist Dan Savage. Warning, all of these sites are graphic. Children are not on this earth for our use. They are gifts from God. They are treasures of Jesus Christ. I stand on this truth as a woman, a mother, a grandmother, not, not a sexual human being, though, I mean, gross. Try and prove me wrong. Take your case before the Creator. Question your reasons for defending sex education and the source of your information. Educating children is, in sex is cruel. It is a far cry from a parent's role to instruct sons and daughters in purity. Remembering our own mistakes, we may fear for our children, but comprehensive sex education does not protect young hearts, minds, and souls. Instruction in purity does. It allows us to protect our children in ways we, perhaps, were not. What can a parent do? For starters, teach boys what it means to be a man. Girls what it means to be a woman. There are only two sexes, equal but different. Teach respect for both. Resist falling for the lie that experts 
know how better to raise our children. Help children and teens set goals. Discuss the consequences of choices. Remind them that their bodies are not their own to do with as they please, but creations of God and valued at a high price. 1 Corinthians 6, verses 12 through 20, or 19 through 20. There is a time for everything. Childhood is a time for innocence. Therefore, keep the fence up and the gate closed. <laughs> All right. I don't know about any of you, but I actually did have comprehensive sex education as a child. And um, starting in kindergarten, yeah, uh, we were taught what is appropriate touch and what is inappropriate touch. We, uh, we saw a movie called Good Touch, Bad Touch. Um, we also saw a movie with Winnie the Pooh and uh, Pig, Piglet, that little pig thing he hangs out with. Um, and, uh, yeah, they let us know what was appropriate and what wasn't so that we could protect ourselves from being molested. And uh, by the time I hit fourth, fifth grade, uh, then we started learning about um, human anatomy and... Uh, uh, about what was going to happen when we hit puberty. And then they actually did split us up. And um, seventh and eighth grade, I took health every single year, I think, up until 11th grade. Um, every single year, we were shown graphic pictures of STDs. And um, we were uh, taught all about birth control and how to use it properly and you definitely should use more than one kind um you gotta be on the pill and use a condom and um yeah so I actually had experience with comprehensive sex education reading this I I have never read anything more uh, terrified of, of human sexuality this person is so freaked out of sexuality, I, I, I've never seen anything like it, and and my my roommate was like, oh, I haven't either. I, I'll bet she was like raped or something, or molested, and I don't know. It's possible, but I personally think that um, the dogma that she's been bombarded with since she was a child in and of itself can cause this kind of damage. Um, uh, this is, this is really too bad, and, yeah, so, hope, uh, hope you learned something about the evils of the Kinsey reports.